Good morning, everyone. Omar Sebek here with this week's Bitcoin market update. And we have a lot to cover, so I'm just going to start sharing my screen and show you what I'm looking at. Uh, first thing we have here is the price action, recent price action. So just to reorient our, us, we, we hit the all-time high of 65000 back on April 14th. Uh, we've since you know been through the summer. We've been giving you the updates on what's been happening. Uh, we never saw the price dip below 30000 we did see it recover, and really over the past couple of weeks, it recovered tremendously. Uh, so right now, where do we stand? We are we, we're, we're using 0.786 Fib as uh, support. We just turned it from resistance to support. So right now, that's serving as support. Price is 57,473. Uh, the support levels, I think, at 57,200. So something to watch. If we break down that support, I would expect to see a couple of days of uh, some bearish action. Uh, you know, but then, you know, we've seen it happen before. Shorts are put onto exchanges because the bears come out of hibernation. They start to get aggressive and a little bit of demand just blows them out of the water. We get a short squeeze that, you know, changes the market dynamic. Uh, I actually don't really expect to see a breakdown. I do expect to see that we're going to see continued price appreciation. We will see some volatility. The thing about volatility at this stage in the market is shorts are always met with longs. Uh, they even each other out. There's also not a lot of funding on the exchanges right now. It is something to continue to watch is how much funding is being uh, taken on the exchanges. That translates into risk. Risk translates into liquidations, and that creates volatility. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, but as it, as it sits right now, we're at that last level of resistance that we just breached last night, sitting at support. Uh, it could be the last chance to jump on board of Bitcoin before we go to all-time highs. And once we hit that $65,000 all-time high, there's no looking back. Uh, why is the price moving so quickly, so fast? Uh, if you're watching the news, you see what's happening around the world. Supply chain issues. We have just a steady stream of bad news, a steady stream of uncertainty. Uh, this CPI was released yesterday. September results were 5.4%, highest in, in, in a long time on the back of other high inflation uh, reports. And I think this is leading to an investor sentiment of uncertainty. Um, they're starting to see Bitcoin as something that is more and more certain as they you know, become accustomed to it and they learn about it over time. And I believe that we're seeing some of this recent price action as a result of that increased confidence. Uh, and we also have investors that are coming into Bitcoin right now that is meeting a supply that has been heavily illiquid uh, because they've been held by long-term holders. I'll show you that in a little bit. The amount of long-term holders that are holding Bitcoin right now is an all-time high. And that always translates into you know, a, a rapid appreciation of price. Um, and it's a bit lagging. So to see this kind of price action this early is both a validation of where we stand in kind of the, you know, the global economic narrative, the qualities of Bitcoin and what it can do um, in a macro portfolio, as well as uh, you know, the br broader and long-term view about the state of the economy and you know, the investor sentiment around the state of the economy. Let's look at Bitcoin dominance because this serves as, you know, an indicator of where uh, capital is shifting within the crypto ecosystem, within the digital asset space. And so anytime you see a red candle here, that means that Bitcoin is losing dominance. That means that it's losing market capitalization and it's losing it to altcoins. And anytime you see, you know, these green spike ups, that means that, you know, investors are coming out uh, of their altcoins and, you know, flooding into Bitcoin. And it's kind of like a flywheel. It takes a lot of momentum to build this up, but once it gets moving, uh, it really is, uh, it could lead to a lot of dramatic price action and also a lot of volatility in the alts. Um, and, you know, alts like Ethereum, like uh, Cardano, Solana, Polkadot. Uh, if I'm an investor in Ethereum right now, I'd be concerned with EIP 1559. I'd be concerned with MEV, which stands for minor extractable value. Read up on those topics. They're really important if you're an Ethereum investor because you really want to get a long-term view of the performance of Ethereum. You know, and the other threat from Ethereum is, is the threat from the right. Um, threat from the left and the right. You have, you know, new projects that are in the pipeline that are coming out seemingly every month. Uh, Polkadot, Solana, uh, bigger, faster, stronger. We're going to continue to see that. Um, you know, if it's easy to make money, then money doesn't really have value. That's a core tenant of, you know, uh, you're just understanding how money works. And, uh, you know, so that, that represents a lot of risk. There's a lot of risk that's held up in the altcoins, you know, from Ethereum to the right. And to the left, you have Bitcoin, which is, you know, very certain, very safe, very secure, very stable. Um, can't really change it. Everyone knows exactly what they're getting themselves into when they buy into Bitcoin. 
And they also understand the long-term projection for Bitcoin in the context of the narrative that we're seeing take place today as it relates to inflation, as it relates to, you know, just uncertainty in the uh, economy. Uh, next, I want to show you, you know, what I mentioned before, this is the available supply. Uh, sovereign supply distribution refers to the amount of supply that's no longer on the exchanges. This is supply that's being held by uh, investors in hardware wallets, cold wallets off of the exchanges. Uh, it could also be lending platforms, smart contracts. But what we see here is uh, the amount of this, the blue line is the long-term holders. We're at an all-time high. We've never seen these levels before. This is about 80% of the Bitcoin supply that is being locked up by long-term investors. And this orange line is the short-term investors. And so what is the delineation between a short-term and a long-term investor? Very simple, 155 days. If there's a Bitcoin address that is holding Bitcoin for more than 155 days, you're a long-term holder. If it's less than 155 days, you're a short-term holder. And a lot of these short-term holders turn into long-term holders because they might have bought Bitcoin yesterday. They know they're going to hold it for long-term. So they flip into that long-term holder category. And this is a really good indication. It's, it's been indicative of the past of rapid price appreciation when we see that you know Bitcoin's being locked up because all you see is new demand. Now, where is that new demand going to come from? In the next couple of weeks, we could be seeing an ETF uh, approval announcement from the SEC. If that happens, that's a full embrace. That's a full embrace by every branch of government that the Security and Exchange Commission has approved Bitcoin as a financial instrument for use across you know any really any type of uh, exchange, any type of market. You'll be able to exchange it in your IRAs, your 401ks, your regular brokerage accounts. Uh, that is really the full embrace of Bitcoin. And if we get that kind of news in the next couple of weeks, there's really no looking back. It opens up the floodgates of capital from places that you know maybe have not even considered investing into Bitcoin. Uh, you know, there's also a general sense now of uh, renewed confidence in Bitcoin because it's it's been through a China ban. It proved itself. Uh, yesterday it was announced that the United States has taken over the uh, hash rate. So we were beating China in terms of the amount of hash rate that's being put on a network, which is amazing for long term investors that are based in the West. Uh, you know, we're also going to continue to watch the Bitcoin dominance and we are going to continue to see if that's trending up. If it's trending up, it's a good sign for Bitcoin. If it's trending down, it's a really bad sign for, um, you know, just the general state of the market. It just, I, I think it means that this uh, amount of frothiness continues for longer. And, um, you know, Bitcoin really drives this market. So more capital into Bitcoin really drives interest into other you know, assets um, and other assets also serve as a gateway to get into Bitcoin. Uh, 2017 is a perfect example of that. Lots of investors got burned on ICOs. We see it today with, you know, these meme coins, Dogecoin, Shiba Inu. A lot of people coming in speculating, wouldn't call them investors. They're speculating, sure, but they're learning about how it works. They're getting, you know, put through the paces. Uh, in many cases, those people become Bitcoiners when they lose their value. And, you know, hopefully they don't turn toxic, which is what happened, you know, with the 2017 entrance that came in through the ICOs. They lost a lot of their money. They found safety in Bitcoin. They ran up the price of Bitcoin. And, but they understood Bitcoin and they, um, they were able to, you know, take advantage of the price action in the 2021 cycle. And many of those investors are now profitable. There's a saying that you don't lose your Bitcoin, you don't lose your value if you hold it for just three and a half years. And it's not even a saying, it's the fact. There's not an investor out there that has lost value. Uh, if they just if they bought the top in 2017 and held it for three and a half years, they eventually uh, became profitable again. And this is a trend that can be understood. Uh, we look at the blockchain to understand why that happens. and. Uh, and you know, as investors learn, they get interested in Bitcoin and they come in. So I, I do believe we're going to see some really, really bullish price action going into April of 2022. And, uh, you know, maybe a little bit beyond that. We'll see. It really all depends on, you know, what happens over the next couple of weeks and months, of course. Uh, you know, but we're going to continue to watch it and we'll give you those updates as we get them. Uh, so that's all I have right now. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment or just reach out to us. Thank you.